Sasa hata sisi tutosheke na kuna mtu anaweza kusoma Zaburi 19:14 Samari can read What it says here is satisfy us with your love and mercy all the time. Ututosheleze na ututoshe kuna mtu anaweza kusoma You can enter. Yeah, na huruma zako kila siku. Then we can be happy and rejoice all the days of our life. Sasa tunaweza kuona furaha na kufurahi katika maisha siku zote za maisha yetu. So we have the joy of the Lord. Wakati tunakuwa na furaha ya Mungu, we have the love of the God, on the God. Tunakuwa na na upendo wa Mungu. Then we can rejoice all our days. Na tutakuwa na furaha kila siku. And we can enjoy our life more. Na tutakuwa na furahishi na maisha yetu kila siku. Now also we might, might come across people who are sad in our congregation. Ah, wakati ni Don't just command, tell them to be joyful. But tell them God loves you. You are, you are precious. And when you love God, God is very happy with you. God will make you happier. So we, now one key to happiness is don't eat garbage. Na sasa funguo moja ya ya kuwa na furaha usikule takataka. Yesterday we talked about that. Jana tulizungumza kuhusu hiyo. We don't have to eat the negative words from people. Ah tusitusime na kula ile mambo ile maneno mabaya ya watu. When people talk negatively, we don't have to take it seriously. No matter how much they talk negatively or yell, it doesn't matter. I won't remember what they say, I don't think about what they say. I won't say I want to revenge. It doesn't matter what they say. I just rejoice in the Lord. I just take the good things of God. Now for me, every day, I think of the good promises of God. So I have strength and joy every day. Now, Hallelujah. Now, how about if in your family you have one two family members always complaining? Or one friend who is always complaining. How can we handle it? Okay, we can handle it like this. First, we accept that this person has sadness or unhappy. Instead of telling them to change right away, we can say, yes, I know you are unhappy. And then we can say, yes, I know in your heart you feel unhappy and sad. I know it's difficult for you. And that's what Paul says, you know, weep with those who weep, rejoice with those who rejoice. So I know it's difficult for you. Can you tell me why you are unhappy? And the person says, well, my husband doesn't treat me well, someone doesn't treat me well, and, and you don't treat me well, so I'm unhappy. And then we'll say, I'm sorry if I make you unhappy. Okay. So tell me how I can change. Tell me how tell me how I can do better. And then we can ask, now when you are feeling unhappy, how does it affect you? So the person says, oh, it makes me feel down, I have no strength. So instead of teaching, I'm guiding. I'm asking, 
how does it make you feel? Unamwambia hii inakufanya usikie. Ukuwe na hisia gani? Maisha yako iko namna gani sasa? Do you want to change? Hebu unapenda kubadilika. And how can you change? Na namna gani unaweza kubadilika? And how I can help you? Na namna gani naweza kusaidia? It's use a question to guide a person to think. Hii ni maulizo ambayo inaweza kusaidia ielekeze mtu kufikiri mtu ambaye anavunjika moyo. This is a skill of counseling. Hii hii ni hii ni mafundisho ya mashauri. Tomorrow I'll talk more about that. Na ninajua kesho nitazungumza zaidi kuhusu hii. So When you are unhappy, how does it affect you? Ah, kama ah, sasa wakati una fura hii na kuafikiri namna gani? Do you want to change? Unapenda kubadilika. And how can you change? Na namna gani unaweza kubadilika? Now does the love of God help you? Na sasa hapo upendo wa Mungu unakusaidia. The person may say, well, I don't believe God is loving me. Sasa mtu anaweza kusema ndio siamini ya kuwa Mungu anaweza kunisaidia. And then we can use the remember the five things we told you that how we can see God's love. Sasa na hapo tunaweza tunaweza tumia yale mambo matano ambayo tumezungumza kuhusu kisu nacho tunavyo tunaweza kuona upendo wa Mungu so as a person when you look at this thing can you thank God for his love ah wakati unaangalia mambo matano ambayo tumezungumzia unaweza fikiria kuhusu upendo wa Mungu the person may say it's hard ah mtu anaweza kusema ni vigumu and then we'll pray with them na na sasa tunaenda tunaomba na and then when we think about the good things of god na hapo tunafikiria kuhusu mambo mazuri do you have more joy pale unachumbia furaha and also how to put down the garbage na hapo tuna tunatia chini takataka these people talk negatively to you ama watu ambao wanakuambia mambo mabaya kinyume kwako can you put down these thoughts unaweza tosha mawazo hayo katika kichwa chako because god can protect you kwa sababu mungu anaweza kukukinga we don't have to be affected by them atapaswa kuwa affected na mambo mabaya ambayo wanatokea so gradually kind the person sasa na hapo As I said, in these days I've been handling this problematic pastor. Sorry. In these days I've been handling this problematic pastor. Yeah. But I don't feel sad at all. That is his problem. I don't have to feel bad. I just ask God to guide me. And I will talk with the pastors around him. How to find a solution. I don't have to feel bad. Now if this is a unhappy person, a sinful person, he has all kind of problems. Do I have to take his garbage? Do I have to take his garbage? No. That is his problem. I know his problem. I can have compassion on him. I can pray for him. And bless him and forgive him. And I can find ways to solve the problem. But I don't have to take his garbage. Whatever he says doesn't matter. What God says matters. What God says matters. What sinful people say doesn't matter. What sinful people say doesn't matter. You agree? Do you yes. agree? Yes. Now if it's a family member, we understand it's difficult for this person. We try to love him more. And guide him to have more positive thinking. But some people are hard to change. Sometimes they are yelling at us. We just say he's like that all the time. I don't have to think about it. I'll just turn around and praise the Lord. I have God. I have all reasons to be happy. 
If God is for us, who can be against us? I want to say, I have gone through difficult times alone. All the people around me were accusing me. Why did you go to Hong Kong? Now you have to start from scratches. You have a financial problem. How can you have money in the future? And I just keep trusting God. I know God is powerful. 
I keep praising God. I know there is a way out. And that time is just trusting in God. And rejoicing in the Lord. When I turn around, I just praise God. Step by step. God didn't help me all the way through. God helped me for a period of time. God provided miraculously a way to help me for a few months or one year. So I need to keep trusting in God. What happens after that? Those days are the days when I, my faith was really tried by God. Yes, it was tried. It's every time, miraculously, at that time, God will open the way. But then it's only for a period of time. And I have to trust God for a new opening. So the point is, we don't depend on people. We depend on God alone. And God can help us. Also, when we build up the ministry, we care about the people and help them. Gradually, we are more friends who will also help us when we are in difficulties. So when we minister to people, don't step on them and control them. Be nice to them, be kind to them. Be their friends. And this is the biblical principle. Love one another as I have loved you. And people will know that you are my disciples. Now, sorry. And then people will know that you are my disciples. So when we have, we are nice to people, build up people. They will be supporting you too. So we don't force people, we don't control people. But we sincerely love them and care about them. And we'll have friends that will be helpless. Hallelujah. Amen. The second question. What if the wife is not treating them well? And the wife is spiritually normal. The first thing we should do. Accept her as she is. At this point, she cannot be strong spiritually. Instead of yelling at her or commanding her to change, now this is the same as helping other people who are spiritually weak. Instead of saying, you have to pray more, obey God more. We'll say, I know it's difficult for you. I know you are unhappy for some reasons. I know you don't feel good. I care about you. I want to be able to bless you. Let us pray together for strength. And what are some things I did that make you unhappy? Have I said something that make you unhappy? I want to change. And what do you like me to do more to you? Now, if we are nice to the wife, at least the wife would not be our enemy. Sorry. At least a wife would not be the enemy. And gradually we can lift them up. And 
¿Ya? In our ministry is very important we have a wife together with us. This is my wife here. We talk every day on the phone. No matter where I go in the, in the world. I always I always Kila say siku. good things to her. Kila siku now from time to time she tell me something I need to change too. And I will thank her. Now in my heart, sometimes I would not feel happy when she told me that something I should change. But I tell myself, my wife tells me how I can change. It's a gift from God. If I listen to her and thank her, then I'm accepting the gift of God. But if my wife has some emotion sometimes, we have an agreement between us. I will say gently to her, you are having some emotions now, and then, and then she will come down. So, now, I know not every wife is like that. But at least we are nice to them, we have a better chance to improve. Lakini kama tunaishi nao vizuri, tunawasaidia kuendelea kuwa vizuri zaidi na zaidi. The nicer we are, the better the relationship will be. Sasa kisi tunavyo watrete vizuri na vile relation yetu inaendelea kuwa nzuri. Now my thinking is like this. Na mawazo yangu ni kama hivi. On earth, the most important person in my life is my wife. So I have all reasons to be nice to her. And I have no reason to hurt her at all. So I don't ever hurt her. So I hope you all have this mentality. And I, I would want to say this to you. I went to everywhere in the world, many places in the world. I hardly see a couple with such a close relationship as me and my wife. I really build on the relationship. Thank God for that. Yes, a question. Pray the Lord is So he had his son. So he had a heart surgery. And the doctor told him to not be checked. The doctor told him he should not be happy, very happy, or to be sad. And this one has got a wife and kids. Now, how can I help him in this situation? What do you mean, do not be? Is it because a heart problem do not be very happy or what? Sasa ni ingusu shida mojo wa mkanda na mambia. Apa shi mwana kusa? I'm a father of Terasio ya mojo. Yes, ye. Because of the son. The son has heart surgery, right? Yeah. So. Mkanda ni mkataza kama asifurai na asifurai. It was forbidden by the doctor. And it was forbidden by the doctor. Hello. And it was forbidden by the doctor to be happy or sad. Because uh, the heart surgery, right? Yes. Okay. Now, let me explain to you the joy of the Lord doesn't necessarily mean ha 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 Said it's about ah. 
Unacheka cheka. And the heart might not take it. Na na moyo haitakubali. Because he has a heart problem. Ile ni shida kwa sababu iko na shida moyo. But when you are happy peacefully, kama unakuwa na furaha kwa amani, smile peacefully, una una unatabasamu kwa furaha. That's that's nothing wrong. Hakuna shida. So the, the doctor is just saying do ha ha ha. Asa do daktari amesema hapana kucheka ama kupiga my emotion. Be peaceful and joyful. Ah, ana kwa na mani na na. Is there any question? Is there any question? Huko ingine ulizo. Ulizo langu ni kusu. Hapo mwalimu alisema ya kwamba ni mzuri sana kutumika katika uduma ukiwa na mume ama ukiwa na mke. Yes. Ni vigumu kutumika katika uduma ukiwa na mke. Ni mzuri sana. Ah, yes. Yes, he was she was talking that it's good, it's better to to have a wife and a husband or a spouse when you are ministering. Sasa yule mwenye anatumika now is she's asking yule mwenye anatumika ni mwanaume hana mke ama ni mwanamke hana mume mwalimu anasemaje so for those who are ministering and they are single what do you tell about them na tena and then juu ya hiyo najua kwamba Yesu alitumika hana mke and for that Paul alitumika hana mke mwalimu anasemaje and for that i knew that jesus what ministered without a wife and the God also ministered without a wife. Okay. What do you mention about it? Okay, my question, my answer is uh, whether we are married or single, we can be joyful and peaceful. When my first wife passed away, I was thinking not to get married. I was just thinking of taking my luggage and go from one place to another to do mission work. But that's not God's plan for me. I did not chase after this wife. I think he, sorry. I did not chase after this wife at that time. I did not chase after any woman. Yes, maybe maybe she could she could wear it. She could wear there. I don't want to be monja. And she don't want to be pariki. And she did not chase after me. Na e aguni aguni fanya ibu. It was just naturally matched by God. It was naturally matched together by God. Yeah. Wakati kuko na mke wangu kabla ya kufa tulikuwa na pamoja tu na muungano wetu Mungu chalikuwa katikati yao. But I put this in prayer for 11 months. Lakini nilitia hii sasa shida ya kukosa mke kwa muda ya miezi fulani. Because I treasure my life and my ministry. Kwa sababu ninathamini sana huduma yangu. And I said to God, na nikamwambia Mungu, if she's my wife, if she will be my wife, please Make this happen and help us to follow your way. As a government of Pata Muki, Acha Bumki Wangu and in the Lip Fanya, Pata Jaya. But if it is not, not your will, the Kama Emu Jayaku, Ama, if it's not your will, stop it forcefully, Umusto Peta Visa. And at that time, I refused to have strong emotional time with my wife now. Sasa sasa pale ni kastope wakati ni chini mali sasa akastope kukuwa na emotion ya mkuu sana na mkuu wajamba ni kwa nisa. Because I was seeking God's will. Kwa sababu ni alimona tafuta nji ya yamu. At that time we are finding out if it is God's will. Na afasa ni kina na jali kwa ngalia kama ni mpango wangu wangu kuchiri mali. So I did not build up emotional tie. Sasa mi mi si kukuwa na chi na chi funga sana kwa lima emotion wa yikuwa na. But I just build up communication. Akini wakati ni kuunga ili kuswasili yamu na mkuu wangu. She's the person. And after my first wife passed away, I can be enjoying God every day. I don't feel lonely. So we need to learn to trust in God and enjoy God and not to be lonely when we are single. Being single, being single has the advantage of freedom. Okay. 
Yeah. He Mary has the advantage that she has another point of view that she can give me. Sorry. Being Mary has advantage. I have my point yeah. of view. She has my her point yeah. of view. Yeah. That will yeah. work together. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes it's painful when we have when we live with someone who hurts us. The point is, if this person hurts us, we ask ourselves, do I have any faults? Sorry. Do I have any faults? If we have any faults, we, we say sorry and we try to change sorry we try to change ourselves first and the point is we don't preach to the other person sorry. just now I said don't preach to the other person you live with it's not going to work I just said already we listen to them what makes you unhappy? How can I change? What can I do to make you happier? Now, if the person says it, and we do it, and then we can encourage the person, okay, I'm working on it. And, and you are working on it. So we are improving. So we thank God for that. So instead of preaching, we don't preach, we just guide. What can, what can I do better? And how is your emotional emotion affecting you? Do we want to work on it? And what can we do? Now I want to say this. When I had my first marriage, it was very different from my second marriage. Now we both were Christians. We both love God. But I was not as careful in the marriage as now. I did not do everything to make her happy. And also she has emotions. And she did not, you know, she got angry and unhappy many times. I'm answering your question. So I was facing many times she was unhappy. Now I want to say I have many mistakes myself. It's the, it's the faults of both persons. The faults of both persons. After I experienced the Holy Spirit, I told her I really want to work on a marriage. I really humbled myself and said many times I'm sorry for what I've done. And I tried to correct as much as possible. It, the relationship didn't improve a lot. But, but still her emotions come from time to time. And I learned to face it and say it doesn't matter. I don't have to eat the anger. I don't have to be knocked. I don't have to be knocked down. 
I said, I've done my best already. God is happy with me. She takes some time to overcome her emotions. I don't have to take her emotions. Sorry. I don't have to take her emotions. One of my tests was that period. After I experience the Holy Spirit, I have to face these negative emotions many, 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 many times. But, but God trained me to face angry words. When I face angry words, I say it doesn't matter. I won't die from it. And when we can overcome, when someone is angry with us, I can face the person. I know why he, he or she is angry. I don't have to take it. It's his or her problem. Okay. Now the second question Someone we live with Is doing Having some terrible behavior That's why I ask you who that person is If the person is your wife We can communicate We can overcome the problem if it's a son or daughter, we also try to guide, not to teach, not to preach. But if the person continues to hurt, we can say, in this family, if you continue to get drunk, I cannot let you stay here. Now sometimes when a child is stealing money or gambling all the time or have terrible behavior they have to be responsible for themselves. Or we set rules how to control this behavior. Yeah. But first we try to listen. Okay?